Hello, beautiful friends. Welcome back to Unbroken Chain. I have had such a privilege this month of spending several weeks with Oso and his beautiful partner, Aga, at their house in Connecticut. They are teachers of mine in the medicine path and also have become dear friends. I wanted to take this moment to talk a little bit about some of the ceremonies that I have experienced with Oso. He was born in Mexico. His uh, mother, grandmother, and grandfathers are all renowned medicine men. And he comes from an indigenous lineage of the Nahuatlacas people. And he came to the States when he was a teenager and was subsequently adopted by Wallace Black Elk and the Lakota people. So the medicine that he practices today is very much within that indigenous container. One of the offerings that he's shared with me that has changed my life is Tonawari, which is uh, toad medicine from the Sonoran Desert Toad. And some of you may have heard of it called Bufo alvarius, which is the Latin name for it and how it's often known in the West or by the chemical compound that is active 5-MeO-DMT. And I just want to take a moment to be really clear when talking about this, that if you're new to this medicine or if you're not super steeped in the psychedelic community and you start Googling it to learn more, there has been a lot of news recently about um, some really abusive practitioners who have used this medicine in ego-driven, manipulative ways ways and it's a good thing that these stories are coming out but unfortunately a couple of these practitioners have become pretty much synonymous with the medicine and that's really unfortunate because their behavior has has nothing to do with the medicine or its transmission and it has everything to do with human greed and so i just want to be really clear that if you're researching this if you're called to it and you're finding some of these stories that it's good to be educated and it's good to choose practitioners that are in deep communion with the land and the traditions that this medicine came from there's kind of a narrative in the western scientific community that tonawari the toad medicine specifically has no evidence of being carried as an indigenous medicine, that there's no lineage. And that is bullshit. <laughs> because when you talk to somebody like Oso, who experienced these medicines as a child, because they were just inherently part of his culture, he took Tonawari for the first time when he was six years old, and he had none of the sort of culturally ingrained fears or questions around it that somebody growing up in the west might so it was just naturally part of his experience it becomes very clear these medicines are a huge part of the human story and have been for a very long time and he his people have stories about the origins of these medicines and how they introduce themselves to humans and to me it's a huge symptom of Western arrogance and the narrow-mindedness of scientific and medicalized frameworks to think that because there is not quote-unquote evidence that fits into those matrices that there is no history. And indeed, scientists actually found recently a thousand-year-old medicine bag bundle in the Andes that had different tools used for ceremonies and medicine application and traces of DMT and coca inside. And that's, you know, one bundle that was preserved enough to be discovered from a thousand years ago. But there is untold wisdom in these lineages that has been very much suppressed and destroyed very intentionally by western colonizers when the conquistadors came and they brought religion christianity they used that as a tool of violence to suppress all of this deep earth medicine and animal medicine that was inherent to the native populations that they came upon and for Westerners to now appropriate those lineages and to claim that they are in fact the progenitors of it is a continuation of colonization and of violence. And that is not to say that Westerners should not be participating in these medicines. 
I think it's very clear to me actually that the medicines recognize that Western culture is broken and needs help and continually humbles me by their willingness to engage with that. But Oso told me a story about a pharmaceutical company that was looking for new antidepressant medicine and they rounded up a bunch of toads from the Sonoran Desert, shipped them to Cuba and tried to basically like continually milk them in a lab setting and the toads wouldn't stand for it. The medicine itself wouldn't stand for being colonized and rather than secreting the hormone from their back that is used in the medicine, they started producing a poison that couldn't be ingested in any way. So while this particular medicine has a way of protecting itself, that does not mean that it's not under threat of abuse and extinction. And so as Westerners, we have a huge responsibility, I think, to seek out the people that have carried this wisdom and to support them and to learn from them and to believe them and the stories that they tell about how these medicines have been a part of their lives for generations. Oso goes yearly to gather the medicine from these toads. There's a certain time of year when the toads are mating and are above ground and it's okay to harvest the medicine and it's spread on like a, a piece of glass and dried and then broken into small crystals that are smokable from a pipe. When I've participated in ceremony with him, I've found this to be such a beautiful transmission. When I talk to other people about Tonawari, I recognize that there can be some fear around it because I think it's less accessible than mushrooms or cannabis or even ayahuasca at this point. And so in that lack of knowledge, there can be fear. And in reality, because when you smoke this medicine you are almost instantaneously on the other side there's really no time for the ego to protest it's pretty much demands instant surrender and i think anyone that has any kind of meditation practice or breathing practice and is able to basically keep breathing through the experience it will do everything else for you and what it's done for me has been profound reconnection with the oneness. I've experienced my body and myself melting, completely disappearing, and through my chest becoming the universe, returning to universal love. And for people that have had deep traumas where trust has been violated, for people who grew up in families where there never was trust, for me to have the direct experience of that feeling of safety and belonging and homecoming is truly life-saving and it gives me a place to return to and to aim to with my practices in my life and when i say practices yes i certainly mean things like going for the runs that i know will make me feel better eating the foods that i know will help me feel clean but i also mean the environment that i demand with the energy that i put out into the world it becomes clear to me that it's imperative for me to learn how to hold that space for myself no matter where i am and when people talk about how psychedelic medicines can cure depression or treat anxiety this is very different from the Western idea of treating the symptoms, of saying, oh my gosh, I feel like I can't breathe, I feel like the world's collapsing on me, I feel like I can't get out of bed, and addressing those symptoms. Instead, it's a much bigger, much more holistic deliverance of, I think, really the meaning that we're all seeking in life, the sense that there is something greater going on than we can perceive with our human senses, and that we have a place in that much greater it is within us and without us we are inextricable from love and these are all things all concepts that i know that i've been exposed to in my life before i started medicine and i am grateful for the people and the signals that brought that into my life and also i have found nothing so potent as these medicines and tonawari especially to deliver that message in an undeniable unreversible way 
The first time I went to the jungle to drink ayahuasca, I had a practitioner who told me that some of what we fear in these psychedelic experiences is having to relive trauma. And the difference between what happens when we are depressed or suffering PTSD, where we, we literally re-experience and re-traumatize ourselves, is that in the container of medicine, we're releasing. So when we're born, we are an empty, clean glass vase, and we're filled with clean, clear water. And as we live and go through life and inevitably experience trauma and acquire survival mechanisms, that water becomes cloudy and it gets little bits floating in it. And when we go into medicine, the medicine pours that fresh, clear, clean water back into the vase, reminding us who we are. And the dirty water overflows the edge and spills out. And our eyeballs and our senses are on the outside of that vase. So when those traumas pass over us, we feel like, oh my god, no, I'm back in it. But that's the experience of it leaving us and learning how to purge, learning how to release, learning how to be comfortable with that feeling of surrender. That is such a good tool to carry in life at all times. And it's helped me learn to move through the world with so much less fear, with so much more confidence that I will be able to meet the moment, whatever the moment is, no matter how uncomfortable it is, no matter how different it is than what I expected or what I wanted it to be, it helps me arrive in it with the confidence that I'm going to be able to respond appropriately and that I'll, I'll be able to take care of myself. I don't think Tonawari is habit forming in the least and if anything, it very clearly tells me, okay, go work and go learn to deepen your love for yourself and for the world and last week when i was in ceremony with oso and aga i was so struck by this feeling of purging and release um, things that i knew that i needed to let go of and also you know the karmic buildup of the stress of generations of survival and what it means to be in the west detached from these healing practices for generations a lot of that gets released in a really safe way and they sing medicine songs that are designed to help move the energy out of you and i had a lot of clarity that emotions that we don't process become calcified in our body and turn into disease because there's no way to avoid accumulating energy that's what we're made of and that's what it means to be in the world to constantly be giving and receiving from the things we input from the media we consume from the food we eat yes and also from one another from our environments and to learn to be porous and accept it and let it move through us to be comfortable with the feeling of releasing of letting go and therefore in each moment to have nothing that we're holding on to that we have to defend against the paradigms of other people and even to become filtration systems of of love if you will so that when we're met with heavy energy dark energy manipulative energy anger fear that we can actually transform it with our bodies and with our spirit and respond with intention and integrity and output compassion humor and healthy boundaries good things <laughs> i'm figuring out how to do this and i'm so grateful for people like oso who have created a life not seeking fame, fortune, and glory, but truly seeking healing and helping people understand how to return to our earth-based roots, our inherent wisdom, our relationship with life, with the universe, with plants, with animals, with one another that is our birthright as humans. That is a gift from someone who has come from a lineage that has been under attack by the very forces that want to make us feel divorced from ourselves in order to direct our energy into other people's profits and other people's gains. You don't have to smoke toe medicine to be part of this work. One of the most beautiful ceremonies that I've learned from Oso 
that I wish that I could do every day is sweat lodge. Like psychedelic medicines that can be so overwhelming and so intense that all I can do is breathe, sometimes being in sweat lodge can be so intense, so hot, that all I can do is pray. And those moments where I am driven to complete humility in my life has manifested the reality of something bigger. And I just want to urge you to start with prayer if that feels like what's available to you. And there is no one kind of person that medicine is for. It is our birthright and you are welcome to claim it.